Welcome to our self-paced sound slide training program on the IBM Selectric typewriter. This is tape one, side one of the segment number 10-1A of this learning program. Please use slide number one to focus your projector. This program has been prepared with a specific objective of enabling the business machine technician to study the IBM Selectric typewriter without the aid of outside help. This is only possible if the instructions given in this program are followed exactly. Failure to heed this may force you to seek skilled help after all. It is absolutely necessary that you know how to operate the IBM Selectric typewriter. No attempt is being made here to teach you how to use the machine. This portion of the program is entitled positive power in the Selectric typewriter. During the presentation we will cover theory of operation, exploratory disassembly, assembly and adjustments. The successful conclusion of this program hinges on your ability to follow instructions and on the correct answering of test questions dealing with the covered material and with troubleshooting. This program also assumes that the student has an understanding of basic mechanics for office machine technicians. You can familiarize yourself with the basic mechanics material through a training package similar to this one entitled Fundamentals of Mechanics. This program is the first of a series of programs which presents the IBM Selectric typewriter in a manner or sequence which you can effectively use for the routine checking or inspecting of the Selectric typewriter. This means that you will be able to use the same sequence of steps when after the course you work on the machine. Slide number two. For this program you will need at least a Selectric one typewriter. The features and changes incorporated in the Selectric 2 machine are covered in the fifth segment of this series of training programs. Platen size and pitch of the machine, which you intend to use, are immaterial. You may use an 11 inch, a 13 inch, or a 15 inch platen machine for the program. We will use primarily the Selectric 1 with a 13 inch platen for our demonstrations. In order not to allow for any confusion during our explanations, let us agree that in this picture we are pointing at the front of the machine. The portion of the machine in which the platen is located will be called the rear of the machine. The part of the machine which is in contact with the table we will call the bottom of the machine. No matter what the position of the typewriter may be, whether it stands on its back or on its feet, we will adhere to the definitions given here. And thus, you should be able to tell what front, back, top, bottom, and left and right mean when we use these terms during the program. You are expected to stop your tape player on your own whenever there is a reason for you to do it. You might, for instance, decide to stop it because you want to write something down and we highly recommend this practice since it helps us remember things. Because you want more time to better inspect some mechanism on your machine or simply because you need the time to carry out the given instructions. The decision as to when to stop your tape player is left up to you, the listener. We hope that you will enjoy this program. Slide number three. We will now step you through the cover removal procedure and examine each step more or less carefully. You will be expected to reinstall the covers without any further explanations from this program. Thus be sure to examine each step as you go. To enable us to remove the covers of the machine we first have to remove the platen. Resting against the platen, there is the paper bale, which you should pull towards the front, away from the platen. 
slide number four. On both sides of the machine, locate these platen hold down latches. Slide number five. Using both thumbs simultaneously, press down on the mentioned platen hold down latches. While thumb pressure is being applied to the latch, the other fingers are lifting the platen by the platen knob. Slide number six. Whenever you store the platen, you must make very sure that it is in some position out of which it cannot roll by itself. Should the platen ever fall from the bench, a broken knob as well as a bent shaft is almost certain to be the result. This can easily be avoided by a precaution such as placing the platen into a tray, as shown here. Slide number seven. Just inside the center section of the machine case, on both sides of the center section, you find these latches. On recent machines, these latches are very short, and you need a screwdriver in order to get at them. Pull them towards the front of the machine. This will unlatch the center section from the bottom cover. If your machine is a very old machine, it may not have this kind of latch at all. If yours should be one of these machines, wait until slide number 21 when we will discuss the old style covers. Let us first continue with our examination of the covers which have latches like these. Slide number eight. Before we can remove the now released center section from the machine, it is necessary to rotate the carrier position indicator or pointer upwards. If you're using a selectric tool, you may simply pull this pointer out of its socket. But if you do, be sure to store it adequately, since it is easily lost because of the fact that it is transparent and small. You can also rotate up both of the margin set levers. If they do not stay or detent in the upward position, consider this okay. Later, when you reinstall the covers, you just have to be a bit more careful with them and lift them out of the way. Slide number nine. It should now be possible for you to remove the center section as shown. Slide number 10. Now let us take a few minutes in order to examine some details about the covers. Notice this stud on the bottom section. On the just removed center section you will find a matching hole for each of these studs. Through these holes and studs the center section and the bottom cover fit and stay together when the typewriter is being used. Slide number 11. When you pull the center section latches towards the front of the machine, this is one of the points on the bottom cover from which they disengaged. Also, take a quick look at the latch on the center section so as to understand how the covers are locked together. You may even consider practicing the reinstallation of the covers a few times before we continue. Be sure not to damage the margin set levers, nor the carrier position indicator. Slide number 12. After you are done, lock down the top cover or lid and be sure to store the cover away from your immediate working area in order to prevent it from inadvertently being scratched or otherwise damaged. Slide number 13. Since we are now ready to lift the machine out of its case, let us remove the paper deflector, popularly known as the paper pan. If your machine is an older machine, the feed rolls will come out very easily simply by lifting one or both ends out of the feed roll supporting arms. If this is your case, 
remove also the feed rolls. Slide number 14. On later machines, the feed rolls no longer come out that easily, and it would be perfectly all right for you to leave them in the machine for the time being. However, if you must take them out, you can simply pry one of the arms a bit and then get them out. Be very careful, however, not to force, in order not to break off, the small ends of the feed roll shafts while doing this. Slide number 15. Once you remove the feed rolls on the new style machine, and you wish to move the carrier while working on the machine, you should use rubber bands or some tape in order to prevent the feed roll support arms from interfering with the movement of the carrier. Slide number 16. Now turn to the rear of the machine and remove the plastic vent grill from the bottom of the machine by lifting it out of the guide slots. It is your option to leave it dangling on the cord or to remove it completely. Slide number 17. Next, turn to the front left bottom of the machine, locate this lock down lever, and then pull it towards the front of the machine. This will free the bottom cover from the frame of the machine so as to enable us to separate the two. But before you lift the machine up, please go through the next two slides.